All right, guys, here's a closer look at our bait. Oh, 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 oh. There we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, here we go. Okay. I got a big fish on here. Oh. Alright, Fishaholic fam, welcome back to Panama, or welcome to Panama here at Los Buzos Resort, and this is episode two of my Panama fishing trip down here, and if you missed episode one, I'll link it somewhere on the screen or down in the description, and uh, I just have to give a huge shout out to Los Buzos for entertaining me for this week, and right now I'm out here on this beautiful patio or deck right outside my cabin, which is really nice and uh, air-conditioned. I'm getting a really good sleep every night, so you can't beat that because that's extremely important, especially after spending a, a long uh, day out on the water. But I can see the lights down the beach uh, turning on now. It's a little after 5 a.m., so the guys are probably uh, getting the kayaks ready down there. I'm gonna hop down there in a minute after I just do my intro. But hopefully today is the day where we could get the right bite from a, a beautiful rooster fish and get that hook right in the corner of his mouth, keep him pinned, and get him in my hands because that's my goal here. I, that's you know been a lifetime long fish that I've been wanting to catch. And I believe yesterday I did possibly have one nice rooster fish hit the blue runner, but it just didn't get the hook. But I did get a nice mullet snapper on a popper, and I got a couple nice Jack Creval, and I got a yellow snapper, which was good last night uh, with some of the sashimi that we had. And then also uh, down in the dining hall, they prepped a nice uh, little um, course of ceviche, which was really good, which I believe was, was with the Sierra mackerel uh, that was caught yesterday. And then on top of that, then we finished it off with a main course of some fresh fried mahi, uh, some vegetables that were grown right here at the farm up the hills here at Los Buzos, which is pretty cool. And also some really tasty yuca fries, which are also grown right here. And Morris, the owner of Los Buzos, after fishing today, may take me up into the mountains for just like a hike or take all of us up for a hike. And also, I believe yesterday there were three nice rooster fish between like 38 and like 42 inches that were caught. And one guy got two and then another guy got one. So they're out there. You know, you just got to present the bait right or lure and just hope for the best. So that's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go out there and fish my heart out. So I'm gonna get my shoes on, head down the beach to the breakfast hall, which is cool. There's a dining hall for dinner and then there's a breakfast hall in the morning, which is like right on the beach. So you just eat your breakfast and then boom, you're on the sand and ready to launch. So stay tuned, let's go have an amazing day. All right, guys, chowing down now. You're definitely not gonna starve here at Los Buzos. Mm. We're gonna get after it in like 20 minutes. Loud and clear, Rich, over and out. Copy. All right, we're heading out now. We gotta go out through this cut to go around the shallow reef and the breakers. And then we're gonna go out to where we were fishing yesterday. And I like that we're getting a second shot at the same area. 
you know, so we can kind of use some of the knowledge that we learned yesterday and apply it to today's outing. Now, Dakota was nice enough to give me some 10 circle hooks. Yesterday I was using like a 7 or an 8 and I'm thinking that possibly that was just a little too small, and that's maybe why I lost the nice fish that hit the blue runner. So basically right now I'm just rigging up a fish finder rig. Got an egg sinker that's like an ounce and a half, two ounces, little bead to protect the braid knot, and then I'm gonna polymer on a barrel swivel. All right, and right here, I've got a like eight to nine foot section of 80 pound fluoro that I'm gonna attach to the other end of the barrel swivel. All right, so on our way out, I'm gonna try throwing the popper again, like how we started yesterday, and just doing some trolling pop to cover some water and possibly get a fish along the way. Hmm, I'm marking a bunch of stuff on the screen. It looks like bait. I tried popping for like 20 minutes and no bites, so maybe we should try and just get a live bait. I'm gonna try dropping this little Nomad vibe down to see what wants to eat it. Hopefully like a eight, nine inch blue runner will. Fish ate it on the drop. Oh, nice. A nice yellow snapper. I believe that's what they're called. Or yellow tail snapper. I got one of these yesterday. That was a little bit smaller. All right. Look at that beautiful snapper. I'm going to bleed them because I'm assuming the guys want them I want them too because this is going to be good to eat later just got a nice uh, yellow snapper like I did yesterday but a little bit bigger here on the uh, 40 foot reef or near the 40 foot reef a little uh, west of it hell yeah man we're just grabbing a couple more baits and then we'll be able to pick that up for you throw it in the cooler sweet so I guess they are getting bait out there as well so I'm going to keep catching the snapper here and what's cool is they're gonna deliver the bait that I need to get a trophy rooster. And if, at least if I could do my part and you know catch a few more of these guys, we'll be doing good. It'll be my contribution. Oh, there was a good one. Oh, there he is. Oh, look at that. A crazy looking trigger fish. That's pretty cool. I think I had one of these on yesterday, but lost it right at the surface. Sweet. All right, I'm gonna tie this up. The guys on the panga are gonna drop off a blue runner for me. And I'm gonna drop off this delicious snapper. A little bit bigger than yesterday. Yeah, we can pick up like six more of those. Perfect. Alright, cool. I'll try like hopefully if I get that rooster, I'll try to just like oh, yeah. do this solely for yeah, it's a fun. few hours. Yeah, it's cool. They they're just whacking that little nomad vibe on the drop. So Jaden, what are you putting on on for bait for me? Show the, the fish, folks, folks at home. Look at that. Oh wow. That looks perfect for a nice rooster fish. All right. Thanks guys. All right guys, here's a closer look at our bait. Hopefully it works. 
I'm in 80 feet of water. I'm gonna drop it down like 50, 60 feet and then start going in a little bit shallower clo and closer to uh, Rooster City. Oh, 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 oh. I think something possibly just ate my bait. Ah, something may have stole my bait. Yeah, ripped off the hook. Dang it. All right, so while I'm waiting for another bait, I might as well throw this little Nomad vibe around again. And I'm gonna mark where I just had that bite. Just went over a bunch of marks back there. Oh, that was a hard bite. Whew. Oh no. This fish has me on the structure, or it did. It just came off. This might be another yellow snapper but maybe a little bit bigger one. Mark that too. That's a, I was a little bit like north of the 40 foot reef. Oh, what do we got here? Oh, look at that. That's a rock snapper, I believe. Look at that beautiful fish. Stoked to catch this. Let me get on the radio and see if we're keeping this or not. Hey Jaden, I just got a nice uh, rock snapper, probably like 20 plus inches. Uh, are we keeping this or not? All right, sounds good. Nice. Yeah, that rock snapper had me in the rocks too. Luckily, like, what's up? Yeah, luckily I like was able to get him out of it and pulled him right up. Yeah, on the vibe. All right, see you guys. All right, let's drop our fresh big eye down. I'm feeling like this is gonna be the one. There we go. Oh yeah. Oh. Oh. Dang, I think I lost it. Still got my bait. That was something with teeth. Maybe a Kubera. Okay, here we go. Okay. I got a big fish on here.
No. Did he come off again? Oh my gosh. Oh. It just seems like I can't win today. Or maybe I can. Something else just picked up the bait now. I'm gonna let him eat it for a while. Stay hooked. Come on. I'm not sure what I've got here. It's jumping. Maybe a small jack curval. I'm not sure. Oh, now it's starting to pull a little. Just as I got the leader above the surface. Oh yeah. Now it's putting on some heat. rooster oh, I hope it is oh, I just got to keep them hooked oh, the one good thing is, is it didn't go into the bottom because that would have been a clear indication of a kubera you know being that it went up towards the surface I think there's a good chance it could be a, a rooster oh, Come on, baby. Come on. Oh, man. This fish has a lot of power. There's the leader. I've got a real long leader, so I'm gonna have to do a little hand lining to get this fish up here. Oh, no way! It's a rooster. It's a rooster, baby. Whew. There we go. Yeah! <laughs> Finally! The dream of catching a rooster fish <laughs> is accomplished. Look at that beautiful fish. Oh man. Look at that rooster fin on top right there. So epic. Woo! <laughs> Finally, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, let's get the hook out and get her back. All right, finally, we got our rooster fish and it is 12 p.m. right now. And we're gonna be out here till like 3, 3.30. So I'm gonna run into a spot called Vaca, see if I can get a bait real quick. If I can, then I'm gonna send another one out to see if we can get another rooster. But if not, then by like one, I might switch things over to either continuing to jig the bottom to see if we can get some more snappers because that was pretty fun or maybe go out a little bit further and see if we like vertical jig something else uh, out there. So stay tuned. Uh, I'm on cloud nine though right now because I just finally accomplished like a childhood dream to catch a rooster fish. So I'm so stoked. Let's keep it going. I gotta be right in by that white water. Oh, there was a bait.
Whoa. Whoa. Oh. Man. That wasn't a bait fish. Something big and then it just took me down into the rocks and broke me off. Oh my gosh, no way. Something literally ate my hook dragon right out behind the kayak. A little blue runner ate just literally a bear hook dragged out behind the kayak. I don't even know why I took him off the hook. He's going back on the hook. All right, let's send it down. And I'm going to go right back to the same trail along two edges that I was working that led to my first three bites on the bait. All right, well, unfortunately, I did two more passes here and no other bites. So I'm just going to crank this bait up a little bit and probably just set it down like 30, 40 feet, and I'm in 65 feet of water, but it should go up to like 50. So I'll just leave it right there. And then I'm gonna drop the vibe on the same mark where I got that rock snapper earlier. Oh, wow, look at all those marks on the screen. We're gonna get something nice here before calling it a day. I just heard Jaden on the radio say that we're gonna just fish for like 15, 20 more minutes and then start working our way back. Snag something here. Oh, look at that. Oh. Got a good fish on here, but it instantly got me in the rock and I think I got it out. There we go. This might be another rock snapper. Or not. Look at that. Just a bigger yellow snapper. Sweet. That's a stud right there. So unfortunately, I'm gonna drop this fish off here on the panga, and I think that's then gonna be it for the day. I wish I was bottom fishing the whole day. I would have really whacked him hard. Yeah, we got a bunch of there you go. All right. All right, guys. Well, this is the easy way to get back to the beach. We took the easy way out yesterday. Now I'm taking the easy way back in today. All right, guys. So right now I'm sitting on a cooler full of fish. Lots of good eats right there. 
I gotta measure this. This guy's like a hair over 17. Sweet. Then I'll measure the rock snapper because I didn't do that earlier. You hold that right there. This guy's a little over 19 inches. He's just a little on. bit behind zero, so you can call it an even 20. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah. He's, just, he's just shy of 20 inches. Nice. This thing gave up an epic fight. Oh, I imagine. good service right there <laughs> we're back so after our second day of fishing I went back to the lodge to get cleaned up for another adventure and now we're gonna do something pretty cool we're gonna hop in Morris's 4x4 and go for a little ride. How you doing, Morris? Good, doing good. Take you on the grand tour. I'm just here griping to my manager from Power Company. They came and cut off this trash, all these trees last week. Okay. They insist on doing. Yeah. And they promised they were coming back for the trash. Yeah. And they left us all the trash up here. Oh, door open. I'm getting all like, yeah, slam that hard. I'm getting all right. on line and file a complaint. So Morris, where are you uh, taking me right now? Okay, so we're going into what we call Parque Los Busos. It's a 400 acre preserve. We've got some residential lots in there that we're gonna do eventually. But right, uh, we have more than 300 acres to set aside forever. It's nice, got nice. 50 kilometers or so of hiking, horseback, road trails. That's awesome. A bunch of which we're gonna go. This is the end of what we call the original Los Busos. Okay. Um, we've got three more houses for sale here. When we okay. do these three, these are mostly all in our rental pools. When we do oh, okay. these three, we'll have 50 beds. Wow. So we're, we're a big size. Yeah, we, we seem like a bunch of little small things, but we're managed together. All of this stuff is under rental management. Okay, so we awesome. Got, we'll have 50 beds, two restaurants, and the fishing lodge. Nice, nice. And, so what and, and where you're taking me now is, is gonna, is, Kind of like a cool nature trail as well. Yeah, what it is, it's, so, a, it's, a, it's a private nature reserve that everybody that buys into gets access to. So nice. the homeowners have access, no matter how big this area ever gets built, they all have access to this 300 acre preserve we're about to go into. And, and of course, if you're staying here and you're say a yeah. wife or a kid and you don't want to go grind it all day out there fishing, then oh, yeah. you can go have fun in the jungle. Um, so what, what, what kind of wildlife should I expect to see? Um, uh, well, no, when, when you have cameras, usually none. Uh, <laughs> we have probably close to 200 head of monkeys, about half oh, wow. hours and half wow. white face with a little lump, we'll see them. Um, That'd be really cool. That's one reason I was kind of rushing to that's a good timing for that. Nice, um, nice. Growing up in the States, I, I've, I've never really seen many monkeys. <laughs> I've only seen little monkeys the size of squirrels uh, over in Brazil when I was there the last time. If I go so. by myself, they jump in the car. But oh, yeah. They want to see them. They get in my whip. Ooh, look at this, guys. that I've got this tusk on is gonna be a 16 stall horse barn that so eventually all of our horses and those animals will be here. Just wow. the food animals will be over on the other Oh there's side. the monkeys right there right up there. That's the white face right there. The white face. They're here to get these Oh um, look at them go. <laughs> they're here to get these um, mangoes. That's oh yeah. I came here quickly. Oh look at them go. Oh that's cool. There's a ton of mangoes guys all over the, the ground here. This is an old so. homestead that I bought oh we got one over here. Ah oh, yeah they're everywhere now Yeah. So these these are different varieties. So of mangoes. cool, guys. So like, cool. If you look back at our site about two months ago, mm -hmm. this one was dropping mangoes. The monkeys were here. Kerry Chin was filming it. He had uh, a little reel that went viral. Okay. Now there's two others. They, there's about six varieties here, and they get ripe at different times. Oh wow. But this was an old man's homestead that I bought. I originally bought uh, 27 hectares on the beach and 100 hectares in the back where we're okay. going. 
and I bought this 60 hectares from him that connected. What is, what is a hectare? Hectares, two and a half acres. Two and a half acres, two okay. Half acres, so. Nice. Metric system. We never bought into that in America, but oh, once you okay. get used to it, the mass a lot easier. Oh, okay, makes sense. All right, so we'll let them come back and finish off their mangoes. See you later, monkeys. <laughs> it's so beautiful up here, guys. Okay, we got a good story here. This is um. So during COVID, me and AJ and Vianney were only exercise we got was hiking these trails. This was yeah. a new, this was a brand new road. So we had a trap camera on this tree right here. Okay. So we were hiking and we come and AJ would check the screen. So about midnight, um, a dog came through here and he turned around and he, we had some corn out here to try to attract the animals to get in the infrared. Yeah. So the dog smelled the corn and he peed on the corn. Oh no. So then about um, 2.30 or 3 in the morning, a coyote came the other way. He stopped, he smelled the corn, he saw that, he circled a couple times, he peed on the corn. Oh, wow. So we were, and he just said, wait, wait, daddy, I think we got a cat. He was obsessed with getting cats. So at about, right before daylight, two beautiful ocelots came out of this trail. They came here, the female, just like most women I've ever been involved with would do, went <laughs> over there, sat down, looked back at the male, like, what are you gonna do, stupid? He came over there, he circled around, circled around, and he turned around right facing the camera and took a dump right in the middle of the corn. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> we're assuming that's the, the ocelot version of hold my beer. <laughs> but anyway. Oh, so this is a property line this right here? This is a property line. Oh, uh, okay. Back Who put this up, the National Park or? No, no, this is, that's another private individual. Oh, uh, okay. All around me, the private individuals all have their land cleared. See, to keep the grass like that for cows, you have to burn or poison every year. Now this is a spring right here. Oh, there's fish in there. Yeah, a little, little bit of minnows. Little, little tiny uh, minnows. Nothing we can fish for. Which... But there's definitely prawns in here though, huh? Oh yeah, they definitely have a little freshwater shrimp. Pretty cool, we're going along a creek right now that saw some little fish in there. And if you come at night, I guess that nighttime is easier to get yeah. the prawns. Yeah. I guess they hide out in the daytime. So at night they're out and about and you can get them easy. The so it'd be pretty love, cool to get some of them. The monkeys love these big trees. So I'm looking for another tree. There's usually a tree below. Oh wow, that tree is huge. And howlers back here. That's, that's an example of a native tree. So after snaking through the jungle, Morris took me to the very top of the mountain to see a breathtaking view. And this place is absolutely amazing and extremely beautiful. And then he also showed me something really interesting and that was a cleared off area closer to the coast that is basically gonna soon be a new development and resort and marina. And this place is already a magnificent place but i can't wait to see what it ends up becoming in 20 to 30 years i got gotcha. you well, well thanks so much for showing me the most of the property the whole property really and uh guys it was really awesome going up there in the jungle and kind of uh, seeing the master plan uh, that Morris has for Los Buzos here and it's going to be so much more than just a tiny uh, fishing resort yep. and um, you, Now you, you're planning on having a full-scale like how many people size resort um, that, Up on the, the, future, the hill over there the future part is going to depend on whoever ends up developing it But there'll be a, a eight acre 15 hectares on the beach, which will be an intense marina resort one yeah. day um this will be what it is. It'll be these last two lots here, mm -hmm. 50 beds. We're gonna manage that. The family's gonna keep control of the lodge and that. We're gonna manage that. That's awesome. And then the houses in the mountains will do just one or two at the time over many years. Awesome. There's all staying in the family. So the intense part, I'm really not interested in getting into at this stage of my life, but, yeah. but it is what I came here to develop. So we're gonna sell that part off, but I'll be picky who I sell it to. But you know, you have me roped in so much already now. Like I, I just wanna keep coming back more and more to see the progression of everything because it's such a beautiful place and I can't, in 20 years, it's gonna be amazing to, to, to go on that same drive that I just did and, and see what, like, or how it, you know, how it turns out and to we be. got, people like so. Jimmy have been doing it for 15 already. They see something different every time. Yeah. So we like to get people well, back. That's awesome. So uh, thank you so much. I'm All gonna, right. I'll, I'll see you down, down at the dining hall. 
And I got some nice snapper today, so I hope that's cool. uh, that's on the menu. In fact, you're gonna through. want to bring your cameras tonight because this display they do okay. with the whole fried snappers is gorgeous. Oh, it sounds delicious. All right, I'll see you in a little bit. All right, see you. Thanks again. All right, guys, it's dinner time now. This is the appetizer, like you know, some fresh sashimi. Like every night, it seems like this is one thing that we can count on is always going to be on the table is some fresh fish like this. Mm. Delicioso. I can't wait to see the main course that comes out. That last piece I had was some yellowfin tuna. This is uh, Sierra mackerel, I believe. Oh, really good. This is the yellow snapper. Snapper is a little bit chewier. Definitely would be a little better probably in like a ceviche. And wow, look at that. We're eating really good tonight. This looks so good. So they just basically deep fried all of the, the smaller snapper, like most of the, most of the uh, snapper that looked like uh, lane snapper. And the, what was the, the rose? Spotted rose snapper and the yellow snapper is what we got in front of us here. The rock snapper, uh, one of the captains on the pangas took it. So either way, we still have a lot of delicious food here in front of us. So. You take some salad, you take some patacones, and then you take some fish. You pull the fish off of the, the, uh, the uh, bones, obviously, put it onto the patacone, make a perfect bite, little salsa, whatever you want. And Check that out, guys. I'm gonna eat the meat, the skin, everything. Oh. The best way to end a great day. Absolutely delicious. And I'm super stoked that I got the rooster today. Got some nice snappers. I'm gonna keep devouring some of this fish. This camera battery is about to die. So I'm gonna end things here and pick things up tomorrow on day three. So stay tuned. And uh, once all these videos are uploaded from this trip, I'll probably just link it somewhere on the screen towards the end of this video. But till I get the next uh, video of the next day up, hit that subscribe button to know when I post it or smash that like button if you enjoyed just to make my day help out with the YouTube algorithm and check out Los Buzos Resort and like always live to fish, fish to live.